I want you to think about how we tie our switched infrastructure together. Now, how do we physically cable it? Well, we're probably going to do crossover cables unless we are auto-sensing of our ports. But that's the physical side of things. Let's think logical. We've got a cable, a physical conduit for information that is normally associated with a single broadcast domain. We want all of our VLANs to cross that exist between both of these switches. How do we do that? We've got one pipe with multiple data streams we want to push. That's what a trunk is going to do. Simply put, a trunk carries all VLANs. It is connectivity for all of your VLANs across that link. Now, a trunk link is not assumed just because we've got a switch-to-switch -switch connection. I want to repeat that. A trunk link is not assumed. You need to verify that. You need to force it in many cases. Now, a trunk is a is a technology that says, I'm going to identify the VLAN for the frame. That's all it's doing. Now notice the colorizing of the two different VLANs that we have here. Technical people will sometimes say, we're coloring the frame. We're coloring the frame. We're coloring it by tagging it with a numeric value encoded in the VLAN ID field now, the VLAN ID field is 12 bits long, which gives us a space of 0 through 4095 to represent. Now, we can only, in fact, use a subset of those, 1 through 4094. The, and there are a few other that are reserved. By the way, steer clear of VLANs above 4000. You might have some difficulties with some other technologies. But that's a pretty big space. That's a very large space. So let's follow the story here. Let's say VLAN 20 communicates. And let's say it's a broadcast. PC2 broadcast. It's in VLAN 20. It hits Ethernet 0 slash 2. OK. Then that switch says it's a broadcast. It needs to go out all ports except the port that it came in on in this VLAN. Now, a trunk link is a, a member of all VLANs. A trunk link is a member of all VLANs. So it will be flooded out the trunk port. But we've got to identify the frame. We've got to tell the other switch what VLAN this frame is a member of. It came in to switch one as VLAN 20. It better stay VLAN 20. If it were to leave its VLAN and go somewhere else, that's routing. And it could have very unintended consequences. It's not proper routing, by the way. You're moving into a different subnet, but not in the right way. And it's probably not going to have any good consequence. So what we do is we tag it. We, we put a little marker on it. Now, if we look at the exact way that we do this. We still keep our destination and source. Those are still there. Destination MAC address, source MAC address. So I said this is a broadcast, so that's the all Fs MAC address. 12 hexadecimal digits to complete it. And the source would be the MAC address of PC2. Those aren't going to be changed. But what we're going to do is we're going to jam in, let's say, my hand is the, the frame header. We're going to jam in some information in there, like a splinter. And that information is the extra four bytes of 802.1q. This is 802one q which is a trunking protocol. Inside of it, it's got its own ether, ether type, which says, hey, this is 802.1q. Be prepared for what I'm about to tell you. We've got a three byte priority field. This is a class of service field. 
class of services layer two marking. And so I said three bytes, excuse me, three bits. And that gives us a range of zero through seven for priority marking. Quality of service people might tell you that you could remap those layer two markings. This is a layer two frame. You could remap those layer two markings to a layer three area. You could remap it to IP precedence or DSCP. But the primary purpose is to put in the VLAN ID. And if we're following, it's just 20. Now it's for writing this out, that would be 20 in decimal. You could convert it to hexadecimal or binary and have some fun with that. But it's going to be 20 for this particular frame. Now, when that frame comes in on the trunk, it says, OK, firstly, I'm prepared for that extra four bytes that is very different than the regular Ethernet frame header. So I better be ready for this. Otherwise, I'm just going to discard it. I'm going to think of it's, it's a baby giant frame. It's just a little too big. I'm going to look at that, that frame, though, assuming I'm properly configured on switch two for trunking. And I'm going to say, OK, you're trying to tell me what broadcast domain to put this back into. I put it back into broadcast domain for VLAN 20. Then I look and say, how am I supposed to forward this? I'm supposed to forward this by flooding out all ports except the port that it came in on, specifically all ports inside of this VLAN. And I have a port inside of that VLAN, Ethernet 1, 0 slash 1. Uh, excuse me, <laughs> you're looking at that and going, that's not the right port. It is an Ethernet 0 slash 2. So that's how connectivity flows between these PCs that are in the same VLAN, but on different switches. So a trunk link allows for VLAN bridging. Very important.